Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supply. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the GE washer tub bearing washer. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new tub bearing washer. The tub bearing washer goes in between the transmission and the tub bearing. The main reason you'd be changing it is if it wore out and you hear the tub bearing wearing on the transmission. In order to get to the part, the first thing we have to do is remove the console. We're going to use our Torque 20 screwdriver and remove the screws across the top. Now that we have the screws out, we can take the console and swing it forward and gently lay it down on the top of the machine. And we can disconnect the air hose for the pressure switch. And then on the other end, there is an orange and white wiring harness that goes to the lid switch. So we're going to disconnect that. Now that you have everything disconnected, we can take the control panel and gently lay it over the back so it's out of the way. Now that we have the console out of the way, we can remove the front panel. We're going to take a putty knife and run it in from the corner until you feel the lock and then go over a little bit more and push it in to release it. And then you can pull on the front panel to get it out. Once you have that side done, you can do the other side. Once you have the clips released, all you have to do is lower the panel down a little bit and lift it off the two retaining brackets. Next we can remove the two quarter inch screws that hold the top to the body. Once we get those out, we can slide the top out forward a little bit and pull it off. Now we can remove these four screws on the back that hold the back panel to the end caps. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver and take them out. Now that we have the screws out of the rear panel, we can remove the five screws that hold in this metal plate. They're quarter inch nuts, so we're going to use our driver to take them out. Now we can remove the end caps, which you can slide forward and lift off the machine. And then you can pull out the water level switch hose. And then all this stuff that has the wire harnesses attached to it, we just need to lay it down on the side of the machine so it's out of the way. Next we can get the agitator out. All you have to do is reach down either with your fingertips or put a couple straps underneath it and lift it off the agitator coupler. Now we can remove the four screws that hold in the tub dampening straps. They're 5 sixteenths. We're going to use a nut driver and take them off. Next we have to remove the top tub cover. It's held in by some snaps that go all the way around the drum. 
you can just release them with your finger. If they're a little bit tight, don't break them. You can press down on the top and let up and that'll release it a little bit easier. Once you have all the tabs off, you can lift the top off the drum. Now we can remove the agitator coupler. We're going to use a wrench, a long extension, and a 7 16 inch socket to take it off. Now that you have the bolt out, all you have to do is lift up on the coupler and it should come straight out. Now we can take out the hub nut. In order to get the hub nut out, we're going to use our spanner wrench with our adapter. And if you'll notice on the nut itself, it actually has the word loosen and the arrow this way. So we're going to use a hammer and pound it loose. You want to make sure when you're hitting with the hammer that you don't hit the inner tub and damage it at all. If your hub nut is on here really tight, you can put some WD-40 down in here, let it sit for a little bit, and then come back and try to get it off. Once you get it loose, you can finish taking it out with your hands. Now we can lift out the inner tub. It's kind of heavy, so if you need to get somebody to help you, make sure you do. Now that we have the inner tub out, we can take out the split ring and the washer. You can take it off by sticking a big screwdriver in the slot and flexing it so it comes loose on the shaft. Once you have it off, you can take off the washer that's right below it. We have to remove the air pressure hose from the side of the tub. On this side of the tub, we have to remove this grounding screw and unplug the motor and the wire. Now we can unplug the motor. Next we can take our needle nose pliers and compress this little clip and pull the wire harness out. And then we can take off this little clip that holds it to the rod. Now that we have the wiring harness disconnected, we can unwrap it from the suspension rod. Next, we can remove the drain hose from the bottom of the tub. We're going to lay a towel down in case there's any water left in there. And then we're going to take our 5 16 nut driver and take the hose off. Once you have it loosened up, you can pull it hose off the tub. Now we can take out the suspension rods. There's four of them, one in each corner. They're all taken out the same way. We're going to use a broom handle and slide it down to the base of the suspension rod. And then you can lift up on the tub to take the tension off the suspension rod and use the broom to knock it out. Now we can take the outer tub and assembly out of the washer. We're going to tilt it forward until it hits the frame and then reach in the back and pull it up a little bit and then get it the rest of the way out. It is kind of heavy, so if you need somebody to help you, make sure you get somebody to do it. Now that we have the tub out, we can cut the zip tie that holds on the overflow tube. Next, we're going to remove the four bolts that hold this structure onto the tub. We're going to use a half inch socket with a ratchet to take out the bolts.
Now we have to lift this whole assembly off the tub. So you may have to stand on the tub while you lift it up. It is pretty heavy, so if you need some help, make sure you grab somebody. Now that we have the transmission out of the way, we can take out the tub bearing washer. Here's the old tub bearing washer next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To install the new tub bearing washer, all you have to do is set it down on top of the bearing, and then we can put the transmission back through it and put the assembly back together. Make sure you line up the motor with this metal plate so it shields it from the motor heat. If you don't have that, just put it to wherever the motor was so the motor's in the right spot. As when you took it off, it's pretty heavy, so make sure you get somebody to help you. All right, when you lower this down, make sure you put the transmission straight through the bearing and lower it down slowly so you don't hurt the seal as you go through the other side. And then line up these bolts with the metal retainers behind the tub. All right, now that we have it in, we can put the bolts back in. We're going to use our half inch socket again. Next we can re-zip tie the overflow tube back to the leg. So we're going to take our zip tie, put it through there, wrap it around, and cut it off. Then we can take our needle nose or dikes and cut the excess off. Alright, now we can put the assembly back into the machine. We're going to rotate it back in the same way we took it out. As you've probably figured out by now, it's pretty heavy, so get somebody to help you. Now that we got the tub back in the washer, we have to hook up the suspension rods. So we have to go around on each corner and lift it up. And on each corner, there's those brackets that hook onto the suspension rods. Now we can do the rear ones. Now we can reach underneath and replace the drain hose. All you have to do is slide it up the tub fitting. And then we can use our 516 snut driver and tighten it down. Now we can take the wire harness and rewrap it around the suspension rod. And we can put our little clip down at the bottom to hold it in place. Then we can run over and put in the clip to hold it into the frame. Then we can plug the motor back in. and put the grounding screw back in. On the other side we can reach down and reconnect the pressure hose to the side of the tub. And then we can reconnect it to the suspension rod. We can put the washer back on. And then the tub bearing split ring. Now we can put the inner tub back in. Make sure you get somebody to help you if you need to. It's a little heavy. Now we can put the hub nut back in. Remember it's reverse thread. So you're going to go the opposite way to tighten it down. Once we have it down snug, we can take the wrench and a hammer and tap it down. Now we can put the tub cover back on and line it up and snap it into place. Make sure you have the little bleach dispenser in the front left corner.
Now we can put it back on the four tub dampening straps and tighten them down with the screws. We're gonna use a 5 16 nut driver. And there's four of these, one in each corner. We can put the agitator coupler back in. All you have to do is slide it down the agitator shaft until the bottom's out, and then you can put the bolt in. We can tighten it down with the same 7 16 inch socket that we used to take it out. Next, we can put on the control assembly so we can carefully lift it up from where we had it setting down. And as you bring it up, we can kind of lay it down where it's supposed to go. The end cap just has hooks on it that you slide in and pull back a little bit. And then we can line up the screw hole. Once we have it lined up, we can use our quarter inch nut driver and replace the screw. Now we can lift the back panel up into place. Uh, we want to make sure that these little tabs go underneath these tabs and that the water valve goes through these holes. Now that that's in place, we can put the other three screws in that hold it in place. Make sure you run the pressure hose back up through this hole in the metal plate. So when we put the console back on, we can connect it to the water level switch. Now we can put the screws in that hold the back panel on. Now that we have the console reassembled, we can take the control panel and lay it over the back so we can put the top on the washer. When you put the top back on, you want to make sure this tab goes into this slot and then you can push it back so it locks in and when you do that, it'll line up this tab so it drops into this slot. Now that we have the top on, we can put the screws in the front. We can use our quarter inch nut driver and put in the screws. Now we can lift the console back over and set it into the three slots. Before we can close it up, we have to reconnect the water level switch. You want to make sure when you hook this up that there's no water in the tub, otherwise it could cause an overfill, and reconnect the lid switch wiring harness. Now we can rotate the control panel up and put the screws in with our Torque 20 screwdriver. Now that we have the part installed, we can put the front back on the washer. All you have to do is line it up and set it onto the tabs at the bottom, and then lift it up so these pins match up with the holes on the front of the panel. Once you have the pins lined up, you can snap it shut. Now that you're done repairing the appliance, you can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and give it a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair, brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.